So hello guys, uh, today's video I guess I'm going to try to explain uh, the axle weight laws when you're driving a tandem truck, like a tandem trailer or uh, multi-axle B trains. Now uh, for this tandem stuff there are some of the Canadian weights that I'm not 100% sure on because if I'm pulling tandem it's in the states and they have much lower axle weight laws like you can you can't take as much weight in the states as you can in Canada so I always judge it by the US weights because they're the lowest and they're like you'll hit the limit first so on a typical 18 wheeler in Canada I think you can actually go up to 13 or 14,000 pounds on the steer axles but for these intents and purposes we're going to go with uh, 12,000 pounds because that's what I've always done and Canadian weights are done in kilograms but to keep things easy for this video I'm going to just transfer everything over to uh, pounds to make everything make sense and I do cross border all the time so I'm judging by pounds regardless so it's what I'm most familiar with so we'll just keep it with pounds so you have 12,000 on your steers and in Canada you can have 18,000 kilograms on your drives which is about 39,683 pounds so you got 39,000 and change and same with the rear axles 39,683 now in the US that's where you'll hit your weight limits first is we'll just go for 12,000 pounds on the drives because I'm pretty sure that is the limit in the states you can't have more than 12,000 pounds on the steers going interstate travel without special permits or without uh, you can get a 20,000 pound steer axle it's the big fat tires I've never pulled a truck with that so I have no experience with that so I'm just gonna disregard that for now if you have a truck with a 20,000 pound front axle that's awesome but um, anyways in the US these drive axles pretty much no matter what 34,000 pounds a lot lighter than the 39683 in uh, <clears throat> in Canada and same with the back two axles 34,000 pound max now all this equals up to 80,000 pound weight limit in the US and that's always been the target to hit and when you go to a cat scale you just get loaded you go onto the scale and you weigh out and you best be sure you're under 80,000 pounds because uh, US scales definitely are picky about their weights if you're under 80,000 pounds like 77, 78,000 you'll just fly right past all the scales if they have uh, the on-road scales and even if you get pulled in you'll get put on the plate and then basically just the green light if your uh, truck doesn't have anything obvious wrong with it so if you keep your weights at normal and you keep your truck looking shiny you're generally not going to have too too much of a problem with the scales um, again in Canada these weights total up to uh, a much higher weight which is 91 366 pounds now that's assuming the 12,000 pound steer axle, you could have more, you could have less. Well, <laughs> yeah, that number is uh, not 100% correct for the Canadian weights, but again, as you can see, it's a lot higher than uh, US weights. So, I when I pulled a tandem axle through the States, it was almost always with a spread axle on the on the flatbed I think they they always called it a 10 1 spread and I think it's because the distance between them is 10 foot 1 inch 
that's just an assumption of mine. I'm very likely wrong. There's probably some other reason for it. But anyways, same thing in Canada. We'll assume the 12,000 pound steers, um, 39683, and the spread is actually, um, you get a few thousand pounds more in Canada. I think it's 41,000 something, 42,000. <clears> I don't know, I couldn't find the number <laughs> when I was looking it up and I'd have to do a lot of digging for that, but that number is not correct for Canada, but it's around that, I think. Um, but what we're here for are the US weights, which is 12,000, uh, 34,000 on the drives, and then because of this spread, it's actually 20,000 per axle, so you get a total of 40,000 on your trailers. Now this makes it easier because your weight limit for the states is still 80,000 pounds, but you have extra wiggle room on your trailer. Now I found with my particular set of tandems, if you load the weights fairly close to the middle, it, uh, it evens out pretty good, but you can load it slightly to the back, load this a little bit heavy, keep this at a lower, uh, lower weight just so you don't end up with one axle being slightly over. It, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room having the 10-1 spread. Um, with this, with the closed tandem up here, there's actually, a lot of van trailers have this, there's a track with holes on it and you can go to a cat scale or if you have air gauges and you know your air gauges that's super helpful but you go to a scale and you read out and if you're slightly heavy on your trailer then you can move it back a couple notches to put more of the weight on the drives now each one of these holes is about 250 pounds difference so if you're 250 pounds heavy on your trailer, you move it back one notch. If you're 500 pounds heavy on your drives, try moving your trailer ahead two notches so, it t so the trailer takes more of the weight. If you're sounding confused now, it, uh, it, uh, it makes sense when you're actually doing it. But that's your standard pretty standard 18-wheeler um, setup. When you get into uh, Canada and Michigan, you're uh, both, both places recognize B trains, but again, they have different axle weights. Um, Canada we'll go through and uh, assume, just like the other one, the 12,000 pound steer axle. Now here, you get the same um, 18,000 kilograms on your drives, which is 39,683. Same with the back, 39,683. 39, now your triaxle here is, let me just look it up here, I have it all written down, 24,000 kilograms, which is 52,9,10 pounds. And then in the US, you have 12,000. Now, when I say US, I mean Michigan, specifically Michigan. They have wonky axle laws as soon as you go over 80,000 pounds gross. So, you have 12,000 on your steers, that doesn't change. Your drive axles here, instead of the 34,000 pounds as normal, 
when you're over 80,000 pounds, for whatever reason, they drop it down 2,000 pounds. So you can only pull 32,000 on your drives. Now, when you have axles, axle groupings that are closer than nine foot apart from the center of each axle, it's only 13,000 pounds per axle. So I could probably do this in my head, but I got a calculator right here. So you have 39,000 on your triaxle, and then 26,000 on your rears. Now you look at these numbers, there's a big difference between what Canada allows and what Michigan allows. So when you see B trains that are spec for Michigan, they add a whole bunch of extra axles. Michigan likes more axles, less weight per axle, but more axles. They say it's better for the roads, it doesn't do as much damage. It's probably true, but it becomes a pain when you have up to 11 axles on a full, um, like on a full rig. So my regular set of B trains for Michigan, they have a drop axle between the drives and the triaxle, and the rear axles here, they split apart um, to the 10-1 spread. Um, they have the slider tracks underneath here, just like a regular van trailer up here, but instead, instead of sliding both axles, you're only sliding one axle. So in Michigan, you drop this axle and you spread this axle out. Now we have 12,000 on your drives, still the 32,000, or 12,000 on your steers, still the 32,000 on your drives, and with nine foot between each of these axles, each of the axle groups, this is now worth 18,000 pounds. Now this is still nine foot, less than nine feet between each axle, so you still have the 13,000 pound per axle, which gives you 39,000. And this, with the spread axle, you now have nine feet between each axle, so each one is worth 18 and 18. So in this setup, or I should go back and total this one up. So with a typical Canadian B train in Michigan, with regular trains, you have 109,000 pounds max gross weight for the whole truck and the trailer. Um, that's why you have the drop axles because all of a sudden you have one drop axle and one split axle and this whole shoochamacallit is now up to 137,000 pounds. I should say in Canada this combination you're allowed it's just shy of 140,000 I think it's 139 960 or something like that. That's the max total gross weight you're allowed in Canada. And that's your goal weight to load when you're getting loaded. Now, regularly, if you don't have the drop axles or anything like that, you're fine at 139,000 in Canada, but as soon as you go to the States, all of a sudden you're 30,000 pounds overweight and that's a big ticket. So with the drop axle and the split there, you're 137,000 pounds, which is a lot closer 
to what you can haul in Canada. So that's uh, with this particular uh, trailer set up, that's the goal that you load to, 137,000 pounds. It's a little light for Canada, but it's right for Michigan. Now, I don't know how in-depth I want to get in this video, but uh, the way... <laughs> okay, in Canada, you want to load, I find, you load your weights kind of in the center of the first trailer, but then you put more weight towards the back of the second trailer. That's just how it works out to get that total 39,683. Now, if you load it like that in Canada and then cross into Michigan, this spread axle picks up more of the weight but it's worth less than 39,683 because 18 and 18 is only 36,000 pounds. So you spread the axle, pick up more weight of the load if it's back here, but it's only worth 36,000. So if you load it proper for Canada, you end up being overloaded in Michigan. So what you have to do is if I'm loading these trailers from Michigan, you basically load the center of each trailer. So it puts a little bit more weight on the triaxle here, but it takes the weight off the spread back there. So when I'm in Canada, oftentimes I'm slightly overweight on the triaxle, but it makes sense when you're. Um, traveling in the States, it's fine in the US. I find the ultimate setup for these trailers, which is what I'm actually pulling right now, is a seven axle trailer, where instead of the spread back here, you have your regular tandem here, and then a single drop axle to make it into a tri-axle. Not the same as this one because there's nine feet between these two. This one is just another tri-axle. So instead of the spread axle with 36,000 pounds, you have the tri-axle that is worth 13,000 each, which is 39,000 gross. So all of a sudden you have your extra 300 or 3,000 pounds. So instead of 30, 137, you can now pull 140,000 pounds in Michigan, which is the same as Canada. So that's the ultimate setup if you're going cross border with B trains. And with the triaxle at the back here, you can load it properly towards the back because the rears can handle that weight now. I hope this kind of made sense to everyone. I, I, I don't know, it might have been uh, pretty confusing, but uh, <laughs> you know, the axle laws are kind of confusing. Uh, if you have any questions, leave me a note in the comments and I'll uh, I'll try to answer them the best I can.